The sun is peaking just over the horizon of West Beach of Dolphin Island, Alabama. We get here early and the tide is low, making it a great time to find some seashells. But it's not just seashells that we hope to encounter today. We'll also discover some of the mollusks that created these shells and other animals that call these shells home. As we walk, we see the grasses of the dunes gently swaying in the ocean breeze, and the remnants of a driftwood fort overlooking this portion of the beach, like a fortification to protect these ocean treasures. Some sandy stretches are bare, but others have dense drifts of seashells where the current and sand come together just right to collect these little gems. These shells come in such a striking diversity of shapes, sizes, and colors that it captures my imagination. I wonder about all this variation and the insight that it could give us about the lives of the animals that made them. We pick up our favorite shells along the way. I'm a bit of a collector, so I try to keep one of each type of shell, occasionally replacing some that I have for a more complete or colorful version. I reach down, intrigued by the bright shine and unique patterning of a shell. To my surprise, it seems to still be occupied. This is a lettered olive. They are a beautiful snail that can often be found on sandy beaches at low tide, from North Carolina to the Gulf of Mexico. I carefully place it back in the inner tidal pool where I found it and watch as it slowly extends its soft body from the shell. It then begins to burrow. The smooth torpedo-like shell allows it to slide easily into the sand as it quickly disappears leaving only a faint imprint in its wake. Even that is soon washed away by a wave, making it look like the lettered olive was never even there. A jarring start to the snail's morning, but a welcome reminder to me about the animals who spend their lives creating these shells to fit their unique needs. Farther down the beach, another shell slowly moves in a tidal pool but it's not moving quite right to be inhabited by a living snail. Instead, I encounter an animal that moves into these shells after the snail's death. It's a hermit crab. As the hermit crab crawls across the sand, something on its shell catches my eye. I take a closer look and notice a host of hitchhikers being ferried by this crab. Most abundant are the barnacles. These little animals are crustaceans and are actually related to crabs. They have feather-like arms. They reach into the water, scooping up bits of food. But most exciting to me is the small white spot below the barnacles. This is actually a tiny snail. It's a slipper snail. These cute little snails are often found on shells inhabited by hermit crabs.
Their flat body and shell allow them to keep a low profile so that they don't get knocked off as they hitch a ride. Now slipper snails, they take the idea of home seriously. As the snail grows, they mold their shell with curves and grooves to fit just perfectly into one specific spot. This home spot is where they return anytime things get a little scary. Since it's grown its shell carefully to fit this spot, it can seal down with no gaps for predators to pry underneath. As I watch, the hermit crab stumbles upon a tasty meal, washed up with the waves. It's a messy eater with scraps of food going everywhere. Here, I begin to understand why these slipper snails like living on hermit crab shells. Not only do they get a free ride, but when the crab finds food, they are perfectly positioned on the lip of the shell to grab some of these scraps. The dynamic ecosystem living in and around this snail shell even after the snail's death is another reason I find these seashells so interesting. The sun is rising higher now, and its touch begins to warm the sand beneath my feet. I turn around and begin the return journey, finding more shells and animals along the way. Like this crab who watches me skeptically as I pass, its stalked eyes raised high into the air. Many animals are hard to see or photograph, making them difficult to identify. But mollusks are famous for their slow, easygoing pace of life. This is reflected in the relaxing process of identifying these animals. Take for example this periwinkle, as it slowly traverses the grassy dunes. Nothing seems urgent for this snail. For live animals like this, you can easily take a picture. And for empty shells, you have the option to either take a picture or bring them home. For these reasons, seashells are one of the best places to start if you've never identified an animal before. If you opt to use photographs, I suggest getting a photo of each side of the shell, because this makes identifying them a lot easier. We make it back to the car, feeling content after such a pleasant walk down the beach with some exciting finds. But as I check my bag of treasures, I feel eager to be back home, where I can try to figure out what all the cool things I found are. At home, I pull up my favorite identification guide on the Seahorse & Co website and carefully compare what I found to the reference photos. When I'm confident in an identification, I write out the label, including my identification and where and when I found each shell.
For me, identifying these shells and organizing my collection is a quiet time of relaxation and reflection. I think about the shells in our recent walk down the beach. And eventually I find my mind wandering until finally everything is neat and organized. Thank you for joining us for this walk down the beach and as I organized my shell collection. These shells are a great way to learn about the unique mollusks that created them and other animals that rely on them. To identify some seashells for yourself, check out the seashell identification guides on our website. They're free to use and currently include the states of the eastern US and Gulf of Mexico. I worked really hard on them, so I hope you like them. If you'd like to join us on future explorations, then subscribe. Comment if you're interested in learning more about shell collecting.